Hi little tigers and welcome back to our last and final instrument of the week before we go back to in-person learning. This week we're going to learn about two instruments for our instrument of the week just like we did last time so that I can show you the rest of what instruments that I got for Christmas. So last week we talked about how I had a wind instrument and a percussion instrument. I remember I said that a wind instrument is when you use your mouth and use the air or the wind that comes out of your mouth to make a sound. Like if you're playing a clarinet or if you're playing a trumpet or if you're playing a flute, you use the air that you blow out of your mouth like wind to make the sound in the instrument. That's why it's called a wind instrument. And we also have percussion instruments because if we remember, a percussion instrument is an instrument that you hit or you strike to make a sound. So I'm going to show you a couple of instruments and let's get started with that. I have one percussion instrument and one wind instrument just like last time. So here is my very first instrument. Now this instrument I play, usually I'll have it sitting right down in front of me, but I play it by taking my mallet here and I strike. So that is how I play the instrument. So if you had to take a guess, would you think that this would be considered a wind instrument or a percussion instrument? Good job. Yeah, it is a percussion instrument because I have to strike the keys to make them make the sound. Correct. That's awesome. So this is called a xylophone or a glockenspiel. It really depends on the amount of keys and the material it's made out of. But the kind of catch all name for this kind of type of instrument is a xylophone. And I'm going to hold it up to show you again. Usually this would be sitting flat on a table like this, but kind of like a piano, it has a bunch of bars or keys on it. If you look very, very, very closely, you can see that all of these different bars have letters on them and they have letters with little uh, things that look like hashtags, but they're called sharp signs on them. So this is an instrument that you use two mallets with kind of like drumsticks and you hit. You strike or you hit the keys with this. As you can see, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller the further you move to the right. So let's hear what the sound difference is. If I go all the way to this biggest, biggest, biggest key over here and I strike, let's see. Okay, kind of a medium sound, right? I don't think we're gonna get very low sound out of this instrument because it's so small, right? Let's hear what happens all the way over here. Whoa, super high. That kind of reminds me of piano, right? Have we learned about on the piano, the left side is super low like that. And the right side is super high. The xylophone or the glockenspiel, they move up in that same direction of higher, 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 higher. You might be wondering why is there two rows of keys? So all of these keys are the regular letter names. They're just notes. However, these keys up here are sharp notes or we'll call them halfway notes. And what that means is this is a one step up. So that's a whole note difference. But if I went up here instead of here, it's only slightly higher instead of like a whole step higher. We'll talk a little bit about sharps and, sharps and flats more when we are in class together. So this is a xylophone. Our next instrument, uh, you might have been a little bit less likely to have seen before. And I've kind of mentioned it before if you've been kind of catching on to my hints. I'm gonna show it to you first and let's see if you have any idea what this thing is. So this is my instrument. Check it out. It is this long, tube. It's made out of wood. It's got some string wraps around it. It's kind of got like a waxy end here. Have you ever seen something like this before? Well, if you haven't, this is called a didgeridoo. And the didgeridoo doesn't make very many different sounds, but it makes a really cool sound. So a didgeridoo you play by putting this end, as you can see, it's kind of got like a waxy look to it at the end here, into your mouth, 
but your mouth doesn't go on the outside of it. Your mouth goes inside of it and you buzz or you blow into it. Then the sound will travel all the way down and out of this bell end. As you can tell, it kind of gets bigger at the end, right? That's because it's called a bell. So let's kind of see what kind of sound I can make with my didgeridoo. Let me stand up and see if I can get a little bit of a better angle of how long the didgeridoo is. Ready? Is that not the craziest sound you've ever heard? Let's try again. So cool, right? Mrs. Young is not an expert at the didgeridoo yet, and I'm really excited to get super good at it. But as you can see, it's very much, um, it's not metal like a lot of the other instruments that we've seen before, right? The didgeridoo, it's made out of this wood, and it's real wood. Like, um, I have to put oil on it to treat it, and if I touch the inside, I get black on my fingers because there is stuff on the inside to protect the wood and make sure that it doesn't crack or anything. There's also string attached. And with that string, there's kind of some glue and waxy bits to make sure that that string is holding the instrument together. As well as this little waxy bit up here, which is the mouthpiece as I would like to call it. And all I do is I put my lips inside and I, can you do that sound? <laughs> try it and I'll try it with it in here you kind of make like a buzzing sound I'm not doing it right right now but buzzing sound inside mm -hmm. kind of neat huh so this is definitely a wind instrument because I used the wind for my mouth even though I was buzzing it it's still wind coming out of my mouth, going into the instrument and out of the other side. So this is definitely a wind instrument. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.